So how does a steam locomotive actually work? The principle is actually just the same as in Stevenson's locomotion all those years ago. The National Railway Museum has an express locomotive, Elliman Lines, cut away to explain it all. Express steam locomotives consume thousands of gallons of water and around 10 tonnes of coal on each shift. The tender is a large tank with a bunker in its top to carry the coal which the firemen will shovel into the firebox. The tank is full of bracing plates to add the strength needed to contain maybe 17 tonnes of water. Elliman Line's grate is around 50 square feet in area and it was hard work for a fireman to keep this supplied with coal. It was about the biggest grate capable of being hand fired. If British locomotives had grown any more, mechanical firing would have been inevitable. Fireboxes were made from either copper or steel. This is steel. And it's like a room full of fire at the back of the boiler, surrounded by its own cavity wall of water, to which the heat passes. The boiler is essentially a long cylinder, through which tubes and flues carry smoke and heat towards the chimney. The numerous tubes create a gigantic heating area. Once the hot gases have passed through the tubes, together with the smoke from the burning coal, they are ejected through the chimney with each chuff of exhausted steam. Steam rising from the violently boiling water around the firebox is collected at the boiler's highest point, normally known as the dome, even though it's a fairly flat dome on this very tall engine. When the driver opens the regulator, high pressure steam at 250 pounds per square inch flows from dome to smoke box, just behind the chimney. It then flows through internal pipes doubling back through the boiler, almost as far as the firebox. After this, the steam is very dry, superheated and ready for admission to the cylinders. It flows into the steam chest above each cylinder. Steam then alternately flows into and is allowed to escape from the cylinders by the double-headed valve as it moves back and forth. This valve alternatively opens and blocks the passageways to the cylinder, where steam moves the piston. Having done its work, steam escapes through the steam chest to the chimney, where it chuffs into the air. The piston's movement is transferred to the connecting rod, which turns the wheels and moves the locomotive. Although the design gradually became more sophisticated over the years, the principles established by the Stevensons in their reciprocating steam engine remained unchanged throughout its life.